Hello everyone, I'm bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for October 2023 today. As usual, the topic we're going to talk about was chosen via a poll over on Patreon. And because of the topic which topped the poll over on Patreon, we're talking about more Gulf War kit here. The kit of a senior aircraftman serving in the RAF in Bahrain in late 1990. Now the RAF deployment to Bahrain was part of the response to the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. It was a defensive deployment, initially at least, basically a deterrent force of Jaguars and Tornadoes to obviously try and deter any attacks against Bahrain, primarily air attacks, it was seen as being the, the main risk at the time. RAF personnel deployed uh, were equipped with combat uniform and so forth, which we can see on the mannequin here. And this is based specifically on some footage available on YouTube, I think from Forces TV, and I'll put a link to that in the corner of the video here. It's well worth a watch. Shows ground personnel and it talks to various uh, officers about the deployment, looks at the base facilities, including shelters built for chemical attack to protect against chemical attack. So quite interesting from that point of view, and I can recommend going and having a look at that. In terms of the kit on the mannequin, it's something of an eclectic mix, and obviously we're going to talk about that in some detail now. Starting with the headgear, we have here quite an antiquated bit of kit. This is the old khaki drill hot weather hat, essentially a khaki version of the jungle hat which had been introduced at the end of the Second World War. This one dating from the 1950s, and that footage clearly shows quite a few of the men wearing these alongside the DPM tropical combat uniform which we have here. The RAF personnel deployed to Bahrain were provided with a tropical combat uniform, which you can see here. This is of course made of poly cotton, and the pattern would basically be used for the production of the desert DPM uniform, which would be introduced. And of course, the men in Bahrain would not be a priority to receive the desert DPM uniform. Even in late 1990, you see that the tropical combat uniform is basically the standard dress uh, around the base. We also have web equipment here, and in quite a few uh, of the uh, sections of footage in that video, which I've suggested you go and have a look at. The men are wearing 1958 pattern equipment. This seems to be in order to carry MBC kit and also the respirator haversack. In some instances, the respirator haversack is carried separately on its own strap, but it does appear in the footage that many of the men who are wearing sets of equipment actually have it on the equipment belt. So that's what I can glean from the footage. If anyone can clarify that point, I'd be very interested to know anyone who served, obviously, as, uh, as part of the base personnel at the time. I'd be interested to hear from you. So the equipment we have here is the 1958 pattern. This is in a stripped down form. Some men in the footage are wearing a full set of equipment with the rear pouches and the cape carrier. Others are wearing just the belt and some pouches and the MBC suit tied to the back of the belt. In this instance, we have the yoke as well and the MBC suit on the back of the yoke, as we'll see in a minute. But otherwise, this is stripped down a little bit. We don't have the rear pouches and the uh, poncho carrier at the back. You can see here we have the ammunition pouches, both ammunition pouches there, obviously supported by the yoke and the belt coming round here. You have rank up on the shoulders of the combat shirt, which we'll see in just a moment. We'll start turning this round now and have a look at some of these other details. Moving on to look at the right-hand side of the mannequin here, you can first of all see a side profile of the hat here, the foliage loops coming round here and the two eyelets there. Basically the same as the green jungle hat, as I say, just made in khaki drill. And as I say, an antiquated design by this point, but these were clearly issued out for use in the Gulf out in Bahrain. You can see here, rank is worn on the epaulette of the shirt, and this is the simple woven rank slide, which you can see here, the senior aircraftman being a three-bladed air screw, which you can see there. Otherwise, the sleeve of this is very plain, as you can see. If we lift this out of the way here, you can see we have the ammunition pouch here and then a water bottle pouch round on the hip attached to the belt in the normal manner in a 1958 pattern water bottle pouch, of course. That's the right-hand side of the mannequin. We'll move this round now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back of the mannequin, the main point to note is the MBC suit, which is carried on the back of the yoke here, as you can see. This has simply been tied on using the tapes, which are intended to support the trousers. Basically, as a very simple set of braces. They've been looped around the back of the yoke and tied off, so this can be carried at all times. In some instances, you see this tied on the back of the belt. Sometimes the yoke isn't used and it's just tied off on the back of the belt. Other men have a full set of equipment, including rear pouches and the cape carrier or poncho roll. And of course, in those instances, the MBC suit is carried inside the cape carrier. Thing to note with these is most of those which show up in the footage, I think all of them in fact are green or an olive color. And I believe this would indicate the olive or green version of the Mark IV MBC suit. I don't believe the Mark III would have been issued out for use in an actual 
area with uh, a perceived chemical uh, threat, threat of chemical attack. I believe the most up-to-date kit would have been used. But again, if anyone can clarify that point, I'd be interested to know. But I believe the MBC suits issued at the time would have been the Mark IV as opposed to the Mark III, the plain green version of the Mark IV MBC suit. And finally, looking at the left-hand side of the equipment, we can see the respirator haversack carried round on the hip here. This is the earlier pattern of respirator haversack, predating the personal load carrying equipment, of course. The nylon have a sack here. This would have contained the S10 respirator, decontamination kit and so forth in there, various other accessories. This is carried on the belt of the equipment and the footage which I've referenced this from does seem to show this, that where the equipment is carried, the respirator haversack seems to be attached onto the belt of the equipment. Where the haversack is carried individually, it's either carried on its own integral strap wrapped around the waist or perhaps on a 1958 pattern belt looped through the belt loop on the back. The reason I mention this is that in Saudi Arabia, I believe the standing op standard operating procedure for the army certainly, and I think for the Royal Air Force as well, was to carry the respirator haversack separate from any other equipment so that if the equipment was removed, you could keep your respirator haversack with you. In Bahrain, it appears from the footage that the if the equipment was being worn, there's no problem with the respirator haversack being attached onto the belt. And that certainly seems to be the case from the footage I've referenced this from. If anyone can clarify that point, I'd be interested to know. Uh, just seems to be the case in Bahrain at the time. And that's what I've chosen to sort of copy here from the footage I was looking at. Where the equipment is carried, the respirator haversack seems to be attached onto the belt of the equipment rather than being carried separately. So I do hope you found this interesting. It's another Gulf War themed video, but a, a bit different, sort of eclectic mix of kit on the mannequin here and obviously looking at RAF kit as opposed to the army. Uh, during the Gulf War, so I do hope it has been of interest looking at this. If you have found it interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And of course, over on Patreon, if you join the corporal tier over there, you get the opportunity to vote each month. There are generally three choices as to what's going to be covered in Mannequin of the Month each month. And obviously a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. As I always say, it really is greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, where there will of course be photographs of this posted up as well, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch, you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address in the description as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.